We have been looking at support vector machines. And for exercise, we're going to train a support vector machine to assign parts of speech to words. So before we do that, let's take a quick look at parts of speech. As a pre-summary, parts of speech help us describe the properties and behavior of a word. So for example, nouns and verbs behave differently in sentences. And knowing what's a noun and what's a verb is going to help us. It is also going to help us in natural language processing because if you ask Siri, Siri, play some music, Siri needs to know that play is an action and that music is what you want the action uh, performed on. You want to play music. You want to do an action, do a thing. So this kind of labeling is going to be very useful for us in natural language processing. Um, in many languages, the exact label of what's a noun and a pronoun is going to be dependent on context. And this is true for English, and it's going to be true for the language in our example, which is Cook Islands Maori. So in order to know that something is a noun or a verb, you need to look at the previous word and the preceding word at least. And you need to look at your context. And finally, not all languages have the same parts of speech. So you might find languages that don't have adjectives, for example, or you might find languages that have parts of speech that English doesn't have. So in summary, parts of speech are labels, like noun, verb, adjective, that we assign to a word according to its properties. Maybe it's morphological properties, maybe it's syntactic properties or positional properties. Which ones do you remember from school? You remember things like nouns, like verbs, like adjectives, and so forth. There's quite a few. Um, the, the main system for describing English has 30-something uh, tags. It has quite a few. Let's look at how we can get them for English. This is an example from the NLTK documentation. There's many packages in Python that can give you part of speech, but this is a very simple example. You take a sentence like, and now for something completely different, and you tokenize it. And then you send the array of tokens to the variable text. Then you take this array of tokens and run it uh, through the function part of speech tag, POS tag of the package NLTK. When you print the results, you're going to get this, a list of, of tuples where the first element is the word and now for something completely different. And the second word is going to be a tag like CC, RB, IN, and so forth. What does the tag mean? Uh, here on the bottom left, you have a list of parts of speech for a very popular system in English uh, called a pen tree bank. If we look at the list, the first element, the CC, is a coordinating conjunction. And, and, and the word and indeed is a conjunction. The word now is an adverb. For is a preposition. And N is a noun. Completely is an adverb and different is the adjective that describes something. But for now it's just tagged adjective. Mm -hmm. And that's a list of uh, parts of speech in English. But we cannot simply have something like a dictionary that has words and then they're part of speech. Because in English uh, one word can have more than one part of speech. For example, here we have the word Facebook. Sometimes Facebook is a noun, as in the sentence, Facebook is an app. Because um, we could say something like Facebooks are an app, um, singular and plural. So it behaves like the noun cat, cats, Facebook, Facebooks. On the other hand, you, Facebook can be, uh, be a verb, like in, let me Facebook that real quick. It's a verb because you can have it behave like a verb. You can have the word, um, she Facebooks, she walks, um, she is Facebooking, she is walking, she Facebooked, she walked. 
So it can adopt the behavior of a verb as well. So things that are nouns in English can also behave like verbs and you can go back and forth. And this behavior is sensitive to context. And look at how sensitive it is, that if you flip the order of words, then the part of spe speech can change. For example, in the sentence, Gus is learning piano, uh, the, the word learning is a verb because it's what Gus is doing. He is learning. And we know it's a verb because the previous word is is, is learning. However, if we changed that to learning is fun, now learning is a noun because it comes before the word is. So at the absolute minimum, we need to know what our previous word is and what our following word is in order for us to identify the part of speech of a word. That is at the absolute minimum for a language like English. Cook Islands Maori is going to have this behavior as well. So in summary, in, in languages like English and Cook Islands Maori, we can only really define nouns according to their distributional properties. For example, nouns can be preceded by prepositions like by, Jake. If we have the word by, what comes after that is probably going to be a noun. Uh, nouns are going to share properties with things like pronouns. Jane arrived yesterday is a sentence where we can replace Jane with she arrived yesterday. And these two are going to be very similar. So a noun is something that could occupy the same spot as a pronoun. So in English, and as we'll see in Cook Islands Maori, we do need to look at a word to look at to know its context. I'm sorry, we do need to look at the context of a word if we want to know its part of speech. This is not true for every human language. Um, there's languages like Russian and Latin where nouns have certain endings that are very different from the endings of verbs. And so it is very easy to distinguish what's a noun and what's a verb. If you've studied Russian or Latin, you remember that we call these case. So for example, in, in Russian, the word book, kniga, is different depending on what we're doing with the book. If I say the book is beautiful, uh, I have to say kniga. And if I want to talk about the book, I have to say a knige, because it's about the book. So, and if it's the cover of the book, I have to say knigi. This is similar to the S in books, for example, in, in the books cover in English. So because nouns behave like this in Russian, it's very easy to identify them and, and contrast them to the verbs. But in English, we're going to need the context. Finally, not all languages have the same parts of speech. For example, Japanese probably doesn't have adjectives. In, in English, we cannot say uh, beautiful book, beautifuling book, beautiful book. So adjectives don't behave like verbs at all in English. But in Japanese, they do. Um, something is beautiful, utsukushi, and uh, the, I'm walking, aruku. Something was beautiful, utsukushikatta. Someone walked, arukatta. Something is not beautiful, utsukushikunai. Some, someone is not walking, arukanai. So as you can see, uh, even though in English, adjectives and verbs don't behave the same way, in Japanese, they do. So maybe Japanese does not have what English would call adjectives, which again doesn't mean that, adjective, that Japanese is deficient in any way. It means that Japanese is perfectly fine and just behaves in a way that's different from English. In, in addition to this, uh, other languages might have parts of speech that you might not be familiar with. For example, Cook Islands Maori has something called a tense aspect mood marker. So these are words that will indicate whether a verb happens in the past, in the present, or in the future. In, in English, we would say um, that Terry went or that Terry walked. Um, but in Cook Islands Maori, you have to say, past go Terry to Rarotonga. Kua aire Terry ki Rarotonga. 
So we have the word past, and then we have the word go, the word tere for who did the action, ki is the preposition, and rarotonga is the place. Past, go, tere to rarotonga. Uh, there can be other tense aspect mood markers, such as the future marker, will go tere to rarotonga. Ka aire tere ki rarotonga. There's one for the present. Te aire ni tere ki rarotonga. Is, go, is, tere to rarotonga. Tere is going to rarotonga. So even though English doesn't have this, we're going to need something called a tense aspect mood uh, part of speech to correctly describe sentences in Cook Islands Māori. Again, why do we care about any of this? because it's going to help us parse sentences and it's going to help us distinguish between actions and things. So again, for example, um, Siri, I don't know, play me the Beatles. Uh, play is the action that you want the software to perform and the Beatles are the thing that you want the action performed on. So it's going to be important for us to distinguish between these two so that the software can know what the action is and what the objective of the action is. It can help us do things like build, like build better replies for chatbots, like identify which part is the action that the person is performing and which part is the, the thing that they're performing it on. In summary, parts of speech include uh, labels like nouns, verbs, adjectives, and so forth. In many languages, for example, uh, in English, the only way to know for sure what your part of speech is, is to look at your word and its context. At the minimum, the preceding word and the following word. This is also going to be true of many languages, such as Cook Islands Māori. Languages can have different parts of speech. For example, uh, to correctly describe Cook Islands Māori, we need something called a tense aspect mood marker that English doesn't have. In the next two videos, we're going to uh, code a support vector machine that can tell you the parts of speech of Cook Islands Māori sentences.